Okay, guys, Assalamu alaikum, everyone. Uh, welcome to another session of uh, Life with SI. Uh, and today we have uh, Ustad Amin with us. Um, he's been, you all should know, he's been with us for many years and do many classes and events with him. Let me just uh, cut it short. Let me just give a, a short intro about Ustad Amin. Ustad Amin, uh, Yusuf studied at Mahat Bhuz. Um, um, sorry. Uh, so Ustaz Amin has been uh, in, in Rubat Tarim to learn Islamic sciences under the renowned scholar Habib Salim Ashatri. He learned uh, Quran memorization at uh, Abu Murem Institute in Tarim. And he has written now and conduct classes and delivers lectures in Singapore. And uh, today's topic will be the heart of the Quran. This is an important topic for this blessed month. So without uh, further ado, I shall now invite Ustaz Amin to uh, continue the lecture. Bismillah. Assalamualaikum Ustaz. Waalaikumsalam warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. <laughs> Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Wa salatu wa salam ala ashrafil anbiya wal mursalin. Sayyidina wa maulana Muhammadin abdullu salata wa taslim. Wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa salama tasliman kithira. Subhanaka la ilma lana illa ma allamtana innaka anta al alim al hakim farabbi shrah li sadri wa yassir li amri wa hlul uqdatam min lisani yafqahu qawli amma ba'du Alhamdulillah praises to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he wish to now we are gathered in one of the properest one of the blessed man Ramadan and what's the best topic to talk about in the month of Ramadan Asaf to talk about, about Al-Quran, in which Al-Quran Al-Karim was revealed in the month of Ramadan. We see that Aisha radiyallahu ta'ala anha, she mentioned about Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam, kulukuhul Quran. The Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam is akhlaq, is etiquette, is Al-Quran. And now we ponder upon ourselves to think how do we become the Quran that was been mentioned by Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam greatly encouraged for us to recite Quran regularly. Which means Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam mentions in a hadith Afdalu ibadah ummati kiraatul Quran. One of the best practices and worship to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is to recite the Quran. In fact, it was something that was advised after Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam passed away. A companion of Rasulullah came to Ibn Mas'ud radiallahu an. Ibn Mas'ud radiallahu an was known for someone who is well known to learn Al-Quran from Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And this companion of Rasulullah had problems in his life. He was stressful and he felt that he can't sleep well. And he asked for advices from Ibn Masud radiallahu an. Ibn Masud radiallahu an replied, to you three things. And inshallah, may be the blessing from Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, your problems and stress will go away. Firstly, is to increase your recitation of Al-Quran. If you can recite Al-Quran, then strive to listen to Al-Quran. If you can listen to Quran, then you need to open the books of Quran and ponder the meanings of Al-Quran. And this companion of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi wa alayhi wa sallam, practice what's been told by Ibn Mas'ud radiallahu an. A week later, he came back to Ibn Mas'ud radiallahu an. He said, Sadakta, Sadakta, Sadakta. Truthful you are, truthful you are, truthful you are. That indeed, what has been advised to you happened. I can sleep well, my problems go away. That indeed, the barakah of Al-Quran that give me uh, solving all my difficulties that I've been uh, holding on to. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa mentions 
to recite Quran regularly. And in a different hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam, Rasulullah mentioned, "Alaika bi shafain." Indeed, to you, two Quran, two things, Al Quran and honey. And you know, Al Quran is like a shifa. Like something that can cure, zahiran, wabatinan. Yeah, outerness or your inner state as well. So it is very important that every Muslim strives to read as much Al Quran as possible. We see that during the time of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wa alihi wasallam, that most of them are trying to fight between one another to compete with one another to recite the most Quran. After Rasulullah passed away, during the time of Abu Bakar Siddiq radhiyallahu an, many companions of the Prophet starts to memorize Quran, starts to read more Quran, and then during the time of Sayyidina Omar ibn Khattab radhiyallahu an, we see that many companions are able to recite Quran, and many of them are memorizers of Quran. In fact, Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wa alaihi wasallam mentions one of the best known companion, Akruukum Ubay. Yani the best of you who recites Quran is Ubay bin Kaab radhiyallahu an, right? So Alhamdulillah, Ubay bin Kaab. If you see that his life was been blessed by the barakah of Quran, so we hope. And this is my nasiha to all our brothers and sisters out there to strive to recite Quran. Uh, there was a study that someone who has old age and had not be able to recite Quran, but he started to learn Quran at the old age. And before he finished reciting the Quran, he passed away. When he passed away, his teachers dream of him and ask him, how are you in a hereafter? And he said, Alhamdulillah, because of my intention, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent me Jibril alayhi salam to teach me and guide me to recite Quran. So that's some of the benefits for those who put that intention. And even though they did not finish reciting the whole Quran, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala raised their rank, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide them in the hereafter to finish the Quran. So the first thing that we see is that Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam advises us is to increase the recitation of Quran, especially in the month of Ramadan. We see that Imam Shafi rahimullah ta'ala, he strive to complete twice completion of Quran in a day. That's how the inheritors of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. This is one way to keep yourself occupied occupied with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, which is kalamullah, the recitation of Quran. Right? And then the next step of reciting Quran is greatly encouraged to recite Quran with your best voice. That once Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam came home late, he was close to midnight, his wife Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha asked, Ya Rasulullah, why are you late tonight? And he said, I passed by the house of Abu Musa Ash'ari radiyallahu an, I heard him reciting the Quran and then I stopped uh, to listen to the recitation of Abu Musa Ash'ari radiyallahu an. And Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said that his voice was like Prophet Dawood alayhi sallam. Rasulullah stopped and listened to Quran. There was a time where Rasulullah was in a mosque and he was pointing to a companion and said, please recite something so that I can recite or so that I can listen, right? Uh, so he said, Ya Rasulullah, is my voice better than yours? Is that a revelation to do so? Rasulullah said, no, I just want to listen to Quran. So it shows the importance of recitation Quran, even when we felt that we have not, we, we do not have the best of the voices, right? It's an encouragement. Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam in a hadith Qudsi says that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala love three types of voices. Yeah. Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam mentions that Allah loves three types of voices. The first voice is a slave of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala asking for forgiveness in the late part of the night. Allah loves that. Right? 
<coughs> That's how Rasulullah and the inheritors of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, when they wake up late at night, that they always ask forgiveness from Allah subhanahu wa taala. Secondly, Allah subhanahu wa taala loves the voice of someone reciting Quran. Uh, no matter how, whether it's melodious or not, that that is the best voice that Allah subhanahu wa taala listens to. And thirdly, Allah subhanahu wa taala is waiting the voice of the cock in the morning waking us up for fajr the reason why the cock is there is because the voice that comes from us by seeing the angels that come down from the sky and they are giving blessings to this world and the creations of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so my dear brothers and sisters if you want to get your heart open to quran make your akhlaq like quran please strive to recite we mentioned that you don't have to recite many surah important surah even the least and the smaller surah can actually bring you to your after and also give you serenity in your life there's a very <clears throat> important story regarding a companion of prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam who enjoys recite surah to their class so even the smallest and the least surah that is mentioned in the quran but it shows the importance of that surah to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala secondly rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam greatly encourages us to ponder upon al-quran allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the quran afala tatadabbarun al-quran in surah muhammad indeed when you recite quran did you ponder upon it it is very important to ponder upon it. The great Sahabi companion of Sayyidina Umar ibn Khattab radiyallahu an, he says that before I start to memorize the Quran, I ensure that the verses that is about to be memorized is practiced by me. Uh, MashaAllah. It shows the strength and the perseverance to ponder into the meanings and not just memorize, memorizing the Quran blindly. So he's trying to practice what has been said by Quran. We see that when you talk about pondering of Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, وَالَّذِينَ يُؤْمِنُونَ بِالْغَيْبِ That indeed the people who are believers, they believe in the ghaib. When you talk about ghaib, something that is unseen, it is part of our pillar of iman to show that when you become a proper mu'min, proper Muslim, that the unseen is also there. For example, in the hereafter, we believe so that we will be responsible for our action and will be asked upon what are the deeds that we have performed in this world. By so, we have to be attentive and we have to be fearful for our acts because we will be asked upon in the hereafter. That in fact, in a year after you'll be asked. And when you are asked, you're not able to lie. In this dunya, you can lie to anyone. But in a year after, we are not the one doing, talk, doing the talking. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says Quran, La yatakallamuna illa man adhina lahu rahmanu wa qala sawaba. That in the inner after, our body parts are given the permission by Allah to talk. So if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Did this slave of mine fast during the month of Ramadan? And he said, O dear tongue, answer me. Only the tongue talks. If the eyes, the eyes, only the eyes will talk and not the rest of the body. So you need to ponder on the Quran. In fact, if you look if, even to the small, small surah that we recite, for example, Quraysh, the ila fi Quraysh, ila fi him rehlata shita iwasai, fali abudu rabbaha dal bait, aladi at amahum min ju'iw, wa amanahum min khawf. The one who gives you safe. 
security. Who's the one give you security? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Especially now, we are in a situation of this wabak of COVID-19. Security is only from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala say, فَسَيَكْفِي كَمُ اللَّهُ وَهُوَ السَّمِيُّ الْعَلِيمُ That indeed, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is enough for us. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is enough for us. Indeed, He is the one ever hearing, the ever listening to us, and ever seeing to us. So when you recite a lot of Quran, and then you ponder a lot of Quran, you will find yourself being the Quran. Many ulama and many scholars who really took Quran into their heart. And when you see in Quran itself, there's this surah that's mentioned as the heart of Quran. That Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa mentions that every living thing has a heart. And the heart of Quran is Surah Yasin. Some scholars actually recommended that you want to get the heart of Al Quran, you need to continuously recite Yasin. And when you recite Yasin, it's greatly encouraged to make an intention while before reciting Surah Yasin. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam mentions in Hadith. Surah Yasin lima kuriat lah. Surah Yasin is to be recited to what it intended to be. So if you make the intention that this Surah Yasin will cleanse your heart, that Surah Yasin will give you ease, that Surah Yasin will give you keep you away from difficulties, give you security. Indeed, you have found the heart of the Quran, and you found the way out of your problems. Inshallah. So when you have recited the Quran and you have pondered the Quran and then you are going to feel the ni'mah, feel the barakah of Quran in you. What is that? It's called akhlaq. Indeed, in Al-Quran itself, there are a few stories that we can learn. One of the stories is Surah Luqman. Surah Luqman is a wise man who's from Africa. He will say that he's a wise man, witty, and he gives very sound advices to his son. Right? And then there was a story that when he was giving advices to his children, one of the most sound advices that he gave to his children was my dear children, worship Allah as much as you need Him. That was very short advice, but very sound. Worship Allah as much as you need Him. So if you ask yourself, how much do you need Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in your life? Security, provisions, ease, stay away from difficulties. That gives you motivation of how you worship to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It shows that <clears throat> when Luqman alayhi salam gave advices to him, the akhlaq of giving advices is there. As a father, he has the right <clears throat> to instruct. But the adab and the akhlaq of giving advices is mashallah. That when he give advices, is not to show that I'm more wiser than you, I'm more cleverer than you, but I'm asking you to ponder <clears throat> and to think about what I've just said. So when you see, when you talk about akhlaq, one of the people that we learn about <clears throat> before Islam and after Islam is Sayyidina Umar ibn Khattab radiyallahu an. As you know, during the time of Jahiliyyah, Sayyidina Umar ibn Khattab radiyallahu an was someone who's against Islam. <coughs> he was against Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. In fact, there was a time where he wanted to kill Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. But he was changed by Quran. 
he heard verses of Quran <coughs> that move his heart. It changed him 180 degrees from hatred to love, from egoistic to humble. And this is something that has been shown by Sayyidina Umar ibn Khattab. And then when he embraced Islam, mashallah, the akhlaq of a changed man is there. For example, during his caliphate, 10 years that he was the Khalifa of, or he was the Amir al Mu'minin, <clears throat> out of his humbleness, his akhlaq, you can see that he did not lead Tarawih prayers ever. Because he was humble to the sayings of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. We mentioned just now that Prophet Muhammad mentioned, "Akro ukum ubay," that the best of you who recites Quran is ubay bin Ka. So indeed, the one who lead Trawi prayers during the time of Sayyidina Umar ibn Khattab is ubay. Follow the next who memorized the best tamim al darri. So these are not very famous companions. But because he was humble enough, the akhlaq that has been shown, that he has the right to change and appoint anyone, he can even appoint himself throughout the 10 years of his caliphate, that indeed he did not lead Tarabi priest. In fact, he was the ma'mum, inshallah. He was the ma'mum in congregation, firstly. Secondly, as you know, <clears throat> out of his humbleness in Omar ibn Khattab, once there was a Roman governor who came over, and he want to talk to the Khalifa, which is Sayyidina Umar ibn Khattab. So he was asking the governor's house. He was asking the Khalifa's house. And this Roman governor was very shocked. Why was he shocked? When he was asking for the Khalifa's house, he thought it was a big bungalow with bodyguards, with horses, with so many uh, best things that you can think about. But instead, you find Sayyidina Omar ibn Khattab in the most sleeping. That was how humble he was. And at night, when most of us are sleeping, Sayyidina Omar ibn Khattab used that time to move around Medina and looking for people that he could help. And then when he introduced himself, he did not introduce himself as Khalifa. He introduced himself as the slave of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Omar ibn Khattab. And there are many stories to show that his humbleness. That humbleness is because of Quran. And you know, Sayyidina Umar ibn Qatar was known to memorize the Quran. Sayyidina Umar ibn Qatar was known to read the most Quran. And Sayyidina Umar ibn Qatar during his time, although it, did not, it wasn't achieved, he had the idea of compiling the Quran. So he, he shows the importance of Quran in our life. Of course, when you see Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, we know that he is at the pinnacle of akhlaq. That certainly is very difficult to follow him, but we strive to our best to follow his steps, follow his footsteps, because there is something that is being recommended and highly encouraged. In fact, when we recite a divai, mauli divai, we say, "Huwa yafu." Wala you are this one of the fossil, the paragraph is what does he mean? That Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is ever forgiving and he did not retaliate. That was his akhlaq. In fact, the story of Hindun killing his uncle when she was a non Muslim. Normally, we will feel angry, frustrated. If anyone who kill our loved ones. But when Hindu became a Muslim, he forgave them. There was also the story of a Jew who swore over him and said that he was a sorcerer, that Muhammad is a liar. But Prophet Muhammad is the one who fed him every day. That was his akhlaq. So when you see when he passed away, <clears throat> Sayyidina Abu Bakr al-Siddiq radiyallahu an. He asked his daughter Aisha radiyallahu ta'ala anha. He asked, Ya Aisha, is there any sunnah that our Prophet has performed that I have not performed? And she, she answered, 
Oh, that indeed have you performed giving food to that Jew? The Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam gave it almost every day, and Abu Bakar Siddiq said no. So indeed tomorrow, he prepared his bread, came over to the Jew, who is blind, and then he fed him. But immediately, his hand was slapped, and he said, "This is not the hand." Who has been feeding me? Who are you? And then Sayyidina Abu Bakr Siddiq cried and wept. He said, the one that is being feeding you has died, which is Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And this Jew said, you lied. That's not true. Abu Bakr answered, that's the truth. If you don't believe me, I will leave you alone. And throughout time, you will find out yourself. Days and close to a week, Abu Bakar Siddiq radiyallahu an came over and asked the Jew, Am I telling the truth? And he said, Indeed, 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 Muhammad has passed away. If he is the one that has been feeding me all this while, while I was telling and slandering him, Ashadu ala ilaha illallah wa anna Muhammad Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. That I witness that there's no Allah, there's no God but Allah, and Muhammad and his messenger. That was the akhlaq that's been shown by Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. In the Kitab Shamail Muhammadiyah, there was once Rasulullah was having discussion with his companions, and these companions were complaining about another companion who has bad traits, bad characters, and it happens that then guy that they were talking about came over and visit Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam when he came over Prophet Muhammad welcomed him treat him to the best ever that he can uh, perform because part of iman is to serve your guests Rasulullah mentions may yu'minu billahi wal yawmil akhir fa yukrim dhaifahu that any of those who believe in the hereafter, that he should treat his guests well. So he treat him to the best of his ability, sallallahu alayhi wasallam. Until he so satisfied and he left. And then the companions, the companions was asking, Ya Rasulullah, this is the companion that we were talking about. This is the bad guy. He's been doing this and that. Why are you treating him well? Our Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam answered, "Indeed, Allah subhanahu wa taala revealed me to correct etiquette and adab." Masha Allah. That was how Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. And this is something that is very difficult to follow, but we strive. We see that the inheritors of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. There was a story. Of Imam Shafi'i rahimullah ta'ala. Imam Shafi'i was a known scholar. <clears throat> he has one of the greatest memorized a mind that he can he, he can perform. He was said that when he's reading a book, if he accidentally sees a page, he might just memorize it. That was how strong he was. But when he was uh, when he was going to, to see his teacher, Imam Waqid, he complained to his teacher out of due adab and humility. He said, dear teacher Imam Waqid, I'm coming to you to complain that indeed my memorization is very weak. Can you give me some nasiha? Can you give me some advices? This is the akhlaq of Imam Shafi rahimullah ta'ala. He memorized Quran at the age of seven. He was a Mufti at the age of 50. But when he goes and visits his teacher, he was asking about how do I improve my memorization? This is Aklaq and Adab. Mm. MashaAllah. We also heard of stories of Imam Bukhari radiallahu an. Eh? Imam Bukhari radiallahu an, he was a non-Arab. He was from Bukhara. And while gathering hadith of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu wasallam, he visited Baghdad. One of the teachers that he took 
Prophet tradition from where Imam Ahmad Ibn Hanbal. While he was there, the scholars there were not happy and did not believe in his ability. And so they decided to have a debate. Out of respect, he agreed. And so they had a debate <clears throat> testing him about knowledge of hadith. They would recite 100 hadith with different and wrong narrators. But out of akhlaq, out of adab, Imam Bukhari radiallahu an, out of respect of the Arabic scholars there, he corrected that. And then when he finished correcting them, he said, dear scholars, if there is mistakes, please correct me. It was how the adab and akhlaq of Imam Bukhari radiallahu an. And you can see and learn that these scholars are there because of Quran in them. Imam Shafi recites a lot of Quran. They became like Quran. Imam Bukhari used to recite half of Quran daily. <clears throat> that was his read on a daily basis. And we see a lot of scholars, a lot of saints, that they show of akhlaq and adab that we should follow. May these acts and examples give us motivation to show the best akhlaq to our ability, inshallah. And now we open up for questions, inshallah. If you have, you can send your questions to our brother Amin, inshallah, for any questions. Alhamdulillah, it was a very, very good session. Uh, very beautiful. Uh, thank you uh, to hear this in the best, uh, blessed month of Ramadan about the Quran. Uh, we do have some questions now. So um, let me read it out to you. So the first question is, uh, sorry if this is a bit off. Uh, we know that there is a possibility that we can uh, promise upon the Quran. Uh, what can I do if I broke a promise which I made upon the Quran? Let me understand the, <clears throat> let me understand the question. Okay. Uh, is it promising to the Quran or he broke a promise to others? Um, okay, it's something like a pact he made with Allah. Ya Allah, I promise upon this Quran that I will not do this and that. Ah, it's, it's called so. Uh, it's called nazar. Oh, nazar. Okay. Yeah. So if someone makes a nazar, mm -hmm. that is like a promise to Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. Okay. However, some of the conditions to be accepted for the nazar to be truth is your ability to perform that nazar itself. Okay. Okay. For example, if you nazar, <clears throat> you hold upon the Quran that if you pass your driving lesson, you mm -hmm. gonna treat the whole of Singapore. <laughs> Uh, so you're not able to do that <laughs> yeah so the nazar has to be something that you're able to do within your limitations okay. if you have not done it then you have to perform that nazar as soon as possible immediately because it's a sin to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala okay. yeah so okay so if they if they break it means like um, so what can they do to is there anything they must do to like um, like Seek forgiveness and stuff. I mean, yeah, of course, you you have to seek forgiveness. Okay, okay. So uh, the next question for someone who cannot recite the Quran, um, what will be your advice for this month? My advice is to keep recite the Quran even when you don't. The minimum they can do is, for example, Surah Fatiha, recite maybe daily hundred times. Okay. Surah Al Ikhlas maybe hundred times. Small small surah. So that when you have the capacity of the love of the Quran, that it will give you the motivation, inshallah, to go and search and persevere to actually learn the Quran itself. So it comes in stages. What if someone is new to Islam uh, okay. and they totally can't read at all for now? Mm. In that so, case? so for for those who are mu'allaf, mm -hmm. right? Mu'allaf, those who just entered Islam, the best and the most advices that I would recommend is to concentrate on your worship first. Okay. Uh, that means your fasting, 
-hmm. your solat. Yeah, Quran will be coming later. Okay. Ah, so the most important part is performing your your pillars of Islam. Ah, that will be the first. Quran will be coming slightly later than that. Okay. Yeah. Um. Okay. With the next question, we saw the saying that the companions and the great imams used to recite many. Uh, used used to recite the Quran many times in Ramadan. And also in other months, like, you know, every month, like, they will read this number of times. Um, how is it possible that they recite this many times, the Quran? Okay, that's why it's in the Quran itself. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives us the dalil and the evidence. Allah says, وَالْأَسْرِ إِنَّ الْإِنسَانَ لَفِهْ خُسْرٍ إِلَّا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَآمِلُوا الصَّلِيحًا So indeed, most of us are in carelessness. In putting ibadah or putting things deeds within certain period of time, right? But if you're doing ibadah with the barakah of time, the Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala make you able to do things that you can't imagine that it can happen. I'll give you an example. <clears throat> During Nisfu Saban, we used to recite Surah Yasin three times, mm -hmm. right? Ah, uh, for those who's been reciting Yasin every day, once a week, once a month. He is able to recite Surah Yasin very fast. Yeah. If that's the first time that you recite Surah Yasin in Nisbu Sha'ban, you will be the slowest. Mm -hmm. uh, so, which means that these scholars were able to khatam the Quran because they are doing daily. They memorize Quran at the age of seven. Mm -hmm. Before they memorize the Quran, they have been maybe completed the Quran hundreds of times. That's how you become fast. Because it become familiar, ah, uh, so you want to read as much as them is possible. You need to familiarize yourself with Quran. Ah, okay. uh, it's like getting stuck in Johor. Okay. If you've been there most of the time, you won't be lost. <laughs> If it's your first time, you'll be finding your road, road, you know, <laughs> and then it takes some time. Ustaz, you miss Johor a lot, I can see. I do. So for the next one, Ustaz, um, we see the scholars from the more Muslim populous regions like Yemen, Senegal, and so on, Egypt. They recite the Quran fast, and also in even in their prayers, they are, they pray fast. Um, is it okay for us to follow them and for us to also um, recite Quran or make our prayers fast? Making the prayer fast, right? It is something which is, uh, you see, if you look into the, the history of Trawi itself, mm. when it was uh, trimmed, so-called, because during the Prophet time, it's very long. During the Prophet time, they used to do Trawi until midnight, mm -hmm. until a third of the night or two-thirds of the night. So during the time of uh, Sayyidina Umar ibn Khattab, it was reduced to five to six ayat per, per, per rakaan or even 20 uh, ayat per rakaan. Which means that you are able to do all this, right? The reason being because some of them are not able to hold on to long rakaat. Secondly, the reason why they are able to recite fast is because they are concerned about their jamaah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because during the time of Sayyidina Abu Bakr Siddiq radiyallahu an, the tribe was so long they were holding on to their sticks, walking sticks. <laughs> Almost all of them were holding to their walking stick because it was so long. <laughs> Right, so I would say the reason why they recite fast in that manner is so they don't want to burden their jamaah. So yes, you are allowed to do that. Okay, Ustaz. So uh, for the last final question, uh, you mentioned about you know this uh, the heart of the Quran is our character and everything. You know, for someone who is doing everything, you know, like reciting Quran, uh, Salawat, and, you know, he's like trying his best to change. Mm -hmm. But uh, certain things he, for example, in terms of his uh, anger, impatience, something, he still find it like, like, although no matter how much he tried to control, but at the moment, he still um, let it out. So what is your advice for those who are struggling to maintain their character according to the Quran? The struggle is a gem. <laughs> okay. 
So be known to those who are struggling, you're not alone. Okay. The inheritors of the prophet, they struggle. Everyone who wants to be good has to struggle. I think it's become the sunnatullah. Yeah, it becomes right now, we are now, uh, what, we're facing COVID-19? Yeah. We're under CB, mm -hmm. sunnatullah. We have to, we have to follow it. There's a lot of anger, a lot of frustrations, right? Mm -hmm. A lot of, you know, job are lost, economy is bad. Yeah. So there's a lot of things that is beyond our control. That struggle is real. So that struggle is how we come back to him. Okay. Yeah. Okay, Ustaz. Thank you, uh, Subhanallah. This was a very good session uh, for us in Ramadan about uh, knowing the reality of the Quran and uh, why we should focus on everything. Thank you so much, Ustaz. Sure. Alhamdulillah, we hope to uh, have more class with you uh, in the future, inshallah, once yeah. the uh, circuit breaker and everything is over. Uh, thank you, Ustaz. Would you like to just uh, close this majlis with a short dua? Inshallah, the dua that has been recommended our Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam during the month of Ramadan. Mm -hmm. Ashadu an la ilaha illallah. Astaghfirullah. Nasaluka al jannata wa na'udhu bika minan nar. Ashadu an la ilaha illallah. Astaghfirullah. Nasaluka al jannata wa na'udhu bika minan nar. Ashadu an la ilaha illallah Astaghfirullah Nasaluka al jannata wa na'udhu bika minan nar Allahumma inna ka afuun tuhibbu al afwa fa'fu anna Allahumma inna ka afuun tuhibbu al afwa fa'fu anna Allahumma inna ka afuun tuhibbu al afwa fa'fu anna ya kareem Bikabul InsyaAllah we'll see you again InsyaAllah okay. Assalamualaikum 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 everyone So before we close this session um, I'd like to make some announcements. Where is it? Okay. So you can actually find this in the comments of this live video. So first of all, tomorrow we're going to have a special segment for Ramadan Initiative, a live kasida for good cause, 9.30 p.m. with our volunteer, I'm sure you all know, Abu Sufyan, for collaboration with Free Food for All and also for our Build a Hospital in Senegal project. So both of these projects, uh, we are doing this for the community. So inshallah, we, I hope that you will tune in tomorrow 9.30 p.m. So for you, uh, just to share a bit more details about the Free Food for All, uh, our collaboration with Free Food for All. So we partnered with them to bring uh, porridge and cooked meals uh, this month to 25,000 uh, people and raise $60,000 uh, for this project. So you can help us by donating any amounts to the following link. You can find it in the comments. bit.ly slash porridge meals or WhatsApp to 8769-3947 uh, to know how you can play a part in this project. And uh, for the second one, for the build a hospital uh, in Senegal project, um, you can go to bit.ly slash hospital 2020. Um, both of these links and details you can find in the comments. And the last announcement is this coming Friday, first May, uh, we'll be having uh, Sheikh Ibrahim Skutima again in uh, live with SI. Uh, the topic will be unleashing our potential being in, uh, in Ramadan. So with that, I would like to say assalamu alaikum to all of you. Thanks for tuning in. I hope this was a beneficial session. Uh, please share, uh, share this and also do check out our YouTube. All our live uh, with SI and our sacred text series, we'll be uploading them into our YouTube channel. So it'll be easier for you all to, to view and share with those who are not on social media. So assalamu alaikum. Thank you very much.